And six people, that means we can start. <laughs> yeah, welcome uh, to our presentation today. Uh, I'm Dennis, this is Wolf, and uh, today we want to show you something, um, something cool with everything. Um, we show you how you can augment your existing extensions components uh, using a low code platform, actually using or following a model driven approach. That's what we're doing, what we're showing you, that's our research. Um, our presentation today is uh, divided into two point, uh, into uh, two parts. One part is um, yeah more the background stuff. I will uh, tell you or show you some typical challenges we all have every day during the development of extensions. Who of you is an extension developer? I think most of you are. Yeah, so I think the challenges we have collected are the challenges you have to tackle every day as a developer. Um, afterwards, we show you how we try to tackle it, or at least what we research how to tackle these challenges, um, named model-driven development, model-driven development approach. Hello. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, we show you our process we defined, um, how you can use this model-driven development approach to augment your existing extensions, legacy components, which you have already installed in the Joomla installation, uh, by, by new extensions uh, following that approach. That will uh, Wolf explain. And this is followed by a demo. I know, I don't always do demos, but when I do, uh, everything breaks one hour before, but I hope everything works out. We show you the stuff, and uh, yeah, then let's start, I would say. Um, we all are Joomla developers, extension developers. Wolf and I do this since uh, 2008, I think. Um, we developed components, modules, plugins for all the Joomla versions, starting from version 1.0. And uh, typical challenges uh, we found during the, the, the over the years were starting with the coding standard. Following the coding standard is actually a good thing. If you are experienced, you can use the 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 the, the, fra the API, the Joomla API, and it makes it really easy actually to create your component. But um, if you are a novice in the domain, if you are a new developer and you want to try to create an own uh, extension, it's actually really hard for you to come in to, 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 find, to see all the dependencies, dependencies as we can see on the file and code base. You have to follow the name structures as we can see here, the typical name structures. We are experienced, we know that. But if you are a novice, it's really hard. And if you, if you have one typo, for instance, everything breaks. And if you're a novice, you don't know what to do. And that could lead you to, oh no, I don't want to use or create an extension for Joomla anymore, especially as, uh, uh, instead of yeah, doing it easy in an easy way. Um, and this is not just an, uh, an uh, this is what uh, I think what we actually see over the years. We are, do, we are working for university where we have a course and teach the, the students how, uh, how to develop Joomla extensions since 2008. And every year the students have these problems. Oh, okay, which architecture do we have and which coding standards do I have to follow? And then we say, okay, there are coding standards like these, but actually there are not really standards for how your component should look like and so on. So it's really hard for new developers to come into Joomla. That's one of the biggest challenges. But even for experienced developers, it could be hard sometimes to adhere to the standards and sometimes, yeah, you, you, you have a bug in your code and you don't find it, it's, it's just a simple thing, just a type or something like that. Um, who of you, um, or what is the typical approach for you to create a new extension, for instance, a new component? What is the, the way you do it, Peter? Uh, well, actually, uh, PHP Storm has a really nice boilerplate, uh, which I use lately, but it's only doing one view, mm. one model, one controller, and when I was looking at this stuff, I thought, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit more, yeah. yeah. But, but what was the, your approach before you could use PHP Storm and this scaffolding, this boilerplate uh, When I started mechanism. with Joomla, I uh, used a component like banners or web links, and I just copy and paste yeah. and search and replace everything. Otherwise, you have to type everything. So, so and that's the usual way. That's what we call a clone and own approach. You clone your exist any existing component or module, you clone it and then you change the stuff that it works and then you try it. But as uh, experience showed, 
even there you can make a lot of, of errors. It's, it's very error prone this approach. There are also so, two great components to Joomla. There are two, yeah, two probably. There, there are, yeah. yeah so they, so they are just maybe without something like click and click and to do this, but it's always, always limited. It's limited. I will um, I will uh, do a limitation later from our work to existing stuff. But of course, there are some component is a component creator, for instance. Yeah, it's it's really good working and it just has good quality in my opinion. But it's limited because it just can create a component, and you have to be experienced, in my opinion, to create a component using yeah. these, these generators. Well. Um, Let's go to another challenge we have to tackle, and this is one of the major challenges we had in the last years. Migration. If the underlying platform changes, yeah, the Joomla platform, especially major platform changes, as extension developers we have a lot of work to do. Yeah? We have to migrate all the stuff to the new Joomla version. For instance, 1.0 to 1.5, 1.5 to 1.6, 7.5, 7, and then to 3. And we have done this, all this, over the last years, and we saw, oh man, this is so time-consuming. It's really, it, it, the, the, the effort can raise tremendously, especially if, if you have more than one or two extensions to migrate. Um, and this is a really big problem. And when we um, started migrating our extensions to Joomla 3, it was five or six years ago, um, we thought, okay, if Joomla 4 comes, we must have a different thing to do this. It must be easier to do this. And the third challenge which we have to tackle, and this is the challenge we focus today, is yeah, how can we handle legacy extensions? Extensions we already installed in our, in our instance, in our Joomla instance, or extensions we used from other persons, third-party extensions, and we want to use them and augment them by our own functionality. How can we do this in an easy way. It's actually quite simple to create a module which uses the data from a component. Yeah, you can do the same thing, clone an own approach, use PHP Storm, this scaffolding, a boilerplate mechanism. This is working and it's working fine, but every time you use data from a component in a module, you have to, uh, yeah, you have to um, uh, uh, find all the dependencies and uh, define the dependencies in your code, and this can be a hard thing. It becomes worse if you want to create a new view, for instance, in your uh, component, in an existing component, because then you have to create the model view controller files, you have to create database changes, and so on and so on, and this can be a yeah, very error-prone process. We know it from experience. So here we are. Um, so this is something, another challenge we want to tackle anyhow. So five years ago, we uh, were at the university with our professor and he said, guys, as we're doing the stuff here, we must find something that increase our development and maintenance speed and make it, it makes it a little bit easier. So we started, is there any approach in research we can use to yeah, um, tackle all these challenges? And there is. It's called model-driven development or model-driven software development, model-driven engineering. Um, in a nutshell, you have a model with, with all the semantic information of your functionality. You have a code generator which uses the model as an input and the code generator generates all the boilerplate stuff you don't have to think about at modeling time. And in the best case, a functional um, yeah, application comes out at the end which you don't have to change by hand. That's the idea behind model-driven development. And model-driven development, by definition, um, is is intended, uh, intended to, um, to tackle the, all these problems we found over the last years. So, okay, we, th we said maybe model-driven development could be suitable for our, yeah, for our problem in this domain. And then we took a look in 2012. Um, maybe you notice this line here. This is called the, the um, hype cycle of Gartner. Every year, Gartner brings out this hype cycle for new and trending technologies and show where they are in their life cycle. And model-driven development was very popular uh, 10 years ago, 10 years ago till seven years ago. And then it was somewhere here because everyone said, ah, model-driven development is cool, but there are two sides of this medal. Um, you have a lot or a tremendous effort you need for creating these tools, generator, modeling language, and so on. So um, actually, it's not working for everything. And then 
modular development started its way on the slope of enlightenment. That means researchers all over the world find out in which domains or in which use cases model driven development is suitable and profitable. And we thought, hmm, in content management systems, especially during the creation of extensions, model driven development can be very profitable. So we choose Joomla as a reference uh, content management system because we were experienced and because it's the coolest content management system, sure. Um, we use it as reference and we started our research. We created um, tools for the model-driven development and we started to find out if it's really better using a model-driven approach in this domain. It is. Um, just besides, open source content management is on the same track. It's, uh, all, this is uh, from uh, last year's report. Um, researching all the content management, open source content management systems. And yeah, it's actually at the plateau of productivity and that's what we know. So, MDD of Joomla extensions is the thing we want to do and this is what we do. So, what have we done so far? We already created tools for doing a model-driven development. Um, these tools consisting uh, of a domain-specific language for creating models and code generator and editors is available in GitHub, but only the, 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 the uh, tools as plugins are available, not the code. This will change, but I come to that point later. Um, our model we have, our, our modeling language, is divided into three main parts. We have entities, entities uh, for the data modeling, um, data modeling of your extension, which ent data entities do you have, which attributes and which references to other entities. The second part, a page part, which encapsulates all the, um, all the model view controller stuff. So everything you need for a view is encapsulated into this page. So you don't have to say, I need a view and a model and a controller. You just say, I want a page. I want a page to illustrate this entity as a list. This you can do with these pages. This is everything in the model. And last but not least, the third part is the extension part. The extension part uh, brings everything together with uh, additionally with uh, manifestation stuff like author and uh, license and all that stuff. And in the extension part you say, I want to create a component. And in the component I want to use this, 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 this and this page. And when you've done this, the generator does all the rest for you. It creates everything else. And especially the generator, this was the most, uh, the most hard work in the last years um, and we are just two up to three developers over the years. So it's really hard and it was really time consuming um, uh, and really hard to maintain. And uh, yeah, but it works in the case, uh, it, it works. I come to that point later and show you the code <laughs> later. Yeah, and uh, to... Um, say something about our editors, I have this timeline here, which starts in 2015. 2015 was the first time, all over the years, we first came in touch with the Joomla community. Shame over us, shame. But um, we were too scared, we were too scared. Um, but then we said, no, we have to show this stuff and we have to go into this com uh, community. And we are so yeah, we're, we're glad, to, we, we, we enjoy the community and everything is fine. And in 2015 in Prague, I first uh, presented our, our staff and our editor. And in 2015, we only had the possibility um, to um, create models and generate code in Eclipse because we are using the Eclipse modeling framework. And after the presentation, actually all of the attendees came to me, of the audience came to me and said, no one's using Eclipse. Who of you is using Eclipse? No one. Okay, that's why we saw. Okay, we have to do something, and um, we started uh, porting all the stuff to more modern IDEs like IntelliJ and PHP Storm because that's what we all use, and that's what we actually also use. And uh, this was not so easy, but we've done it. Uh, in 2016, we uh, presented our um, yeah our infrastructure for PHP Storm in uh, the Joomla days uh, Netherlands and uh, it, everything works and since then we just started um, making our generators better and so on. But even then we thought it's not enough to bring or to, to um, provide plugins for all the different IDEs. 
maybe it's better if we can make it more platform independent. And that brings us to the yeah, to our de demonstration today. Um, we created a web editor. So now you can use JumDD, all the tools here, uh, in a web editor. Of course, it's just a prototype, but it's online. You can all use it and try it out. It's online tested. Um, and it uh, yeah, doesn't mind which IDE you use. You can create everything in this web development, uh, in this web editor. And you can download all the stuff and import it easily into your common IDE. That's also possible. But if you're interested, we can talk about that later. Yeah, this is uh, what we have done so far. I think Wolf will show you now yes. yeah, the process. Thank you, Dennis. So um, this picture illustrates our model-driven augmentation process. Um, in this picture, you have two um, use cases. The first starts here. If you have an existing component or Joomla extension, you want to have this extension as a model to work with our tools. So first you have to extract the model out of the existing component and uh, load it into our editor to be able to augment it, to be able to change something in it. And uh, what you get is an extension model of this existing, yeah, for instance, um, component. And you get the three parts uh, Dennis showed us, entities, pages, and extension part. And then you can go to, um, go to here and modify it or augment it. Um, we will demonstrate um, how to, later we will demonstrate um, how to augment um, our existing component um, with a model, uh, module. And after you did that, you can uh, generate um, a new or yeah, a new component out of this extension model here, this part, and then you get uh, the new extensions um, yeah, with the changes you made. And then you can deploy it to your page, and everything will work fine. Or if you uh, don't have an existing component or Joomla extension, you just can start here and create a new model from scratch, and then. Yeah, you have to uh, fill out these parts and you can generate it and then you can install it. Okay. So um, our demo here will demonstrate um, <coughs> all of these parts, the reverse engineering part where we um, extract the model from an existing component. Then we uh, will augment it. Um, we create a new module for this component to uh, show data in the front end. And after that, we will um, come here to the forward engineering part and uh, generate um, new code out of the extension model. And um, we will also see that we can install it and use it. <coughs> OK. So this is our web editor. Um, we will show the functionality soon in the demo. But uh, we have this input field where we can uh, define and uh, see our model and uh, yeah, do modifications. You also see uh, here on the right a tree structure where um, we see our workspace where all the files goes in and we see that we have uh, here a model file. We see here a um, folder where all the generated artifacts um, will be and a um, reverse, reverse uh, folder where we see um, later uploaded existing component. And we have some, some actions here. Some buttons, various buttons we can use uh, to do all this stuff and actions. So then, Dennis, I think it's time for a demonstration. Demonstration? <laughs> okay. If you so. want so. <laughs> so you want to see something? It's more interesting than just hearing us. Okay, then let's go. Oh. Yeah. So uh, first we will show you the, um, our conference component and the uh, Joomla website. Uh, yeah. Do you press the question? Yes. So, some uh, changes you take, for example, with Joomla 10.4 and 10.8. Have, I have an extension of the of 10.4. Can I 
input it. It will take out 8.7. That's the point. It will work. Um, um, but because it just it takes all the stuff which is actually independent, yeah, you know, it takes the entities and pages and it stuff. It's actually part of our reverse engineering tool. If it's good enough, it will work with every Joomla version. Currently, this is not the case, to be honest. Um, the current uh, reverse engineering tool um, works for us. It, it extracts the stuff we need, but not everything. But we are currently working on a, on a new uh, parser. I'd say something later to that point. And um, yeah, then it will be possible. And it will be independent to the version because it will work. It's just a kind of question how our reverse engineering tool is developed. Okay, and continuing this, if I create a new project, yeah. like you know, then I can choose what version of Joomla to create a generic code. That would be great in future, but currently it's not. It's not the case. Um, it's just code. Yeah, it's just the, the 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 current version we have in our generator. But I come to a point. Okay. 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 Um, so we have the conference component here with participants, talks, um, agenda, and rooms. And maybe we go maybe to the back end. Back end. Yes. This is a usual. A standard component, or okay, it's called simple conference, with this, uh, yeah, for with the, with the crack functionality for four entities. Yes. Okay, and um, our goal now is to um, augment this extension and um, have a new module that will show all talks um, yeah, here in the front end. So, what we want is a new module. A new module which uses the data of this component. So what we have to do is we have to reverse engineer this component first, then we re-engineer the model which is um, resulting, and then we can generate the module. And in the best case, it works. <laughs> okay. So what shall we do first? Uh, yeah, the editor. Show you the editor. <laughs> when you use this editor, and you see it's an uh, it's. A, the, the, it's uh, online, you can use it directly if you want, but no, use it, use it later. I have to tell you, this is just a prototype. Um, we, we brought it uh, online because we want you to use it and we want you to test it, but we do not guarantee anything. So, of course, it will not break your computer, but it could be that next week um, we uh, delete everything from our server and then all your stuff is gone. So, download everything if you use it and then it's not lost. That's what we can guarantee, but nothing else. Um, if you use it, you use it by, by your own. It's just an alpha <laughs> version. <laughs> but it works, it works. But all the, the stuff which comes, uh, all this uh, non-function stuff, it doesn't work. We don't have a, user, a good user management. User management is just, you can type in your username and any secret, and we don't encrypt the secret and all this stuff. It's just for testing. So we create a new user. Check. And then it starts uh, with one resource which is actually empty in this case. And uh, what you can do, you can now start loading examples, like conference example, and it's in here. And then you can generate the code, but this is not the, the thing we want to show you today. What we want to show is the uh, extraction part. Yeah. So uh, following our process, um we have an existing component and want to extract the model out of it. So we have, uh, first have to upload it into our workspace on the server. And uh, this file must be a zip file um, with a valid Joomla extension um, structure. But it doesn't depend on... It. The only thing what is important is the correct definition in the manifest. So if you... Um, just a short story. Um, when we started years ago, we learned that the typical component structure is admin side and language and then all the stuff is in there. But today, actually, uh, you should follow another, um, another uh, structure with, which uh, is equal to the structure in an Insta Joomla extension, right? So, and it doesn't matter. You can upload both. It's working both. It just depends on your manifest, of course. So we use this component as input. 
upload it. Okay, successfully. And then you see in this reverse folder, something's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The extension, yeah. <laughs> it's great. And now um, comes the extraction part. You have to um, select the manifest file of the um, component. And then you can press the button here, model extraction. Do it. <laughs> then it will take a while. And what we see is we have a new model file here with the same name, same name com simple conference on EJSL, and uh, you can load it by selecting it and click load model. And it's okay. in here. And now you have um, all the three parts we showed, uh, we showed, uh, uh, showed you, the entity part, the pages part, and the extension part. And one thing what can be a little bit confusing are the, the carrots we use here, right? These are for um, yeah, masking uh, your, 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 um, your identifiers so that they are not keywords. Because if they are keywords, everything is read in the editor. And with that, you can, uh, yeah, can make sure that there will be no error. The generator later takes everything away of these carrots. So everything later what is generated is without the carrots. These are just for masking the stuff in the editor. So like list search and so on. And you see, there's actually more in this model as you usually would model when you do it from scratch because it's a reverse engineering, we don't want to lose anything. But uh, we have this entities part here with participants and a lot of attributes and talks and a lot of attributes and room, agenda items, and we have the pages. Um, but just a simple thing. Um, just the, the reference to entities um, and not, not definition for which attributes we want to show and so on. But it doesn't, we don't care because uh, we want to create a new module in this case. So we just want the names of the pages. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, and uh, the last part, the extension part, is this component part. Uh, where we have this manifest stuff, language stuff, where we can define which languages we support, and um, yeah, the sections, front and back end sections with page references. But what we want to do is we want to create a new module. And let me show the component definition stops here. Of course, this is a new language as well, but it's a local language. We have to manage as well. Here we can use um, code completion, we have syntax highlighting, the typical stuff you need if you have a, an own a language. We can start with the module and yeah and so on. I'm lazy, that's why I'm not a computer <laughs> scientist. So I've prepared this. Well, great. so this is a conf talks uh, module with some manifest manifestation stuff, languages, no, I don't want German, I want English. And uh, yeah, here's this page reference. In a module, you can now use the same pages you can use in a component. Uh, it's, they are reusable, that's the cool thing here. And we want to use pages we, we extracted from the component, like the talks in this case. So maybe we we delete this line and create it anew. So. so we want a page. And you get uh, all the pages you have in your model um, here in this list. We want the talks. And now, if you generate this, there will be placeholders in your code because the generator cannot now with, with which component this module should work. But you can define a, a dependency here to a component and this is the difference to all the other existing stuff we have um, with this from oops and then you see the components you defined okay they are two but they are the same simple conference this is our component let's take a look here our model name is simple conference and our, compo our component name is also simple conference this carrot here but we don't mind because we're not generated. And now you can define 
from where of your component and how you take the data from your component. You can load the model of your component's front end page, of your component's back end page, or you can directly access the data in the database of your component. And uh, yeah, this is the keyword data, and afterwards you can say what you want. And this is just for the generator to know which, in which kind he shall create the dependency in the code. Uh, web service, we, uh, we have it in our language, but it's not supported at the moment, but it will be further. Um, let's use backend DAO. Hope it works. Okay, and that's all. This is all we have to, um, to model, not more. This is just a few lines. Okay. okay, so this is our module model or our documentation. And uh, now we want to recreate or generate our um, yeah, extension. So you have to select the model first, and then you can click generate code. And that will take some time. Works. But then you can see here in source gen, you have folders and files. You first have the independent um, indi entities, extension, and pages. And in the extensions folder, you can find uh, our component, which we uploaded. Uh, but it's, it's not important for us because we don't use, want to use this component. We use the yeah. component which is already installed. Right. And here's our new model, uh, yes. module. Which yes. we this is the model we want to install, we want to use. We have modeled. And uh, we have a context menu here you can use, it's jQuery, but you can also use this download here. And you can use this download for every node in your tree. You can download everything um, and it downloads as a zip file. And in this case, we want this mod conf talks, download, and there it is. Okay, now we install it. And now we install this module, just that you believe we don't have any module here. <coughs> These are all the modules we have already installed. And now let's install a new one. And this is the critical part of Actually, the demo. Yeah? Um, you could have installed it already, but there's no reference yet to it. So if you go to manage then, and modules, then you see if it's installed. So uh, to manage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, manage again. Yeah. And then uh, search, yeah, yeah. search to bar manage. Search for consults. Um. <laughs> or select the type. Okay. If you click on the ID, in the, in the, sorry, on the right, yeah. uh, you have uh, the ID numbers on the other side. Here. Yes, yeah. if you click it two times. Okay, that you see the new ones. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's not installed. It's you. not installed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> ah. Good point. <laughs> Good point. But we are experienced enough. We have uh, hit <laughs> it anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, well, let's uh, go to the install, and we can directly put it here. This was successful. <laughs> let's go back again uh, to the modules. Ah, it's there now. It's conf talks. Let's name it talks. Um, published and position denied. And everywhere on our pages. Okay, everything worked. Um, you have, we have some um, prepared options for every module we generate. Uh, you can define the ordering of the, of the attributes of the entity we want to show, um, or how the entities are ordered, um, all the typical stuff here. And let's go to the... So that's the most critical part. Shall I update the page? Good. I do it. Ta-da! There is a module, and it shows the data of the con of the component. And as you see here, there's too many data we show here because there's data we don't want to show actually. Yeah, it's everything because we said we want to take this page, and the page has a reference to the entity talks. And because we made this reverse engineering, we have all the attributes, also the attributes like uh, created by and all that stuff. If you don't want that, you can go back to your editor, go to the entity you want to illustrate, like the talks, and then you can change it here. 
perks, like we just want uh, all this stuff, nothing more. Maybe not the ID, but all the, ad, uh, the entities need a um, unique and primary attribute. Let's say it's a title here, and then we don't need the ID. Yet. So if you don't have this, it doesn't mind that we also have the ID in there. Hope it works. So we can not generate again. Download the model again. Awesome. Did you select the uh, model? Okay. Don't have to. Ah, that's for it. Download. It's reinstall. Works. So let's show you now. And then you see there's just the information. And this was actually very fast. Yeah? And we changed it very fast and it works. And of course, we cannot generate template stuff. The template stuff is part of you as a developer. Um, you can yeah, add individual code if you want, and it works as well. All right, want to say anything? That was a demonstration, um, and I don't think we have the time for more, so then let's go back to the slides. Uh, well, then let's conclude what we showed you and what we have seen and what we have done. Um, and what we are doing actually, we are creating or create, we are researching the area of model driven development in the domain of content management systems and more precisely on Joomla. And uh, you can use this approach, and this works actually quite good for, uh, um, for the scaffolding as well as the PHP Storm scaffolding mechanism or component creator mechanism. And component creator is really cool. We are, uh, we are um, uh, use it as reference, the, the generate code as reference. Um, but the thing we do more is uh, you can develop all the other extensions as well and you can create dependency <coughs> between the extensions as well. And this is something you we never saw anything else anywhere else. And you can use it, all the stuff is in GitHub, you can uh, try it out. But we know it's hard to try it out if you are not used to it. Um, you can contact us, you can, um, uh, yeah, we, you can help us to make it better uh, this will be part of the next weeks. And also you can use the stuff for the augmentation, the thing we showed you. Um, of course the augmentation we showed with the new model, but you can also augment um, exist, uh, the, your component uh, by new views, uh, all the stuff which uh, depends to a view and so on. This is all possible. What are the next steps? The next steps are that um, this reverse engineering tool, as I said before, is just um, um, yeah, and, uh, also a kind of prototype. It does what we want it to do, but it's not perfect. Uh, therefore, we created um, a new PHP parser, which is running uh, on uh, Java in Scala. Uh, it's, uh, it's up to date, not like the other parsers you can find open source, which, which are PHP 4 and so on. This is PHP 7 and it works. And we bring this uh, parser to GitHub as a standalone parser in the next week, next or uh, the next two weeks. And with that parser, we will be able to create a more sophisticated um, uh, reverse engineering tool. The next thing is we need our generator to test it. We are just two or up to three developers and we cannot test our own stuff. That's the best thing you can do, test your own code. So we need you as a, comp as a community and all the other uh, people to test the stuff. That's why we put everything online. Also the editor tested. Uh, give us feedback would be great if you do so, um, so that we can improve our tools. And another thing, and this is actually the most important thing, and this brings me to the end of the presentation is, we have to make everything open source. In the last years we thought about should we give our generator to GitHub and everyone else can see it and can take it and make money with it and yeah, make it better as we do. Uh, maybe not, maybe it's better if we let everything close in our uh, university. But in the last weeks we decided to know. Um, it doesn't make sense if you have an, uh, uh, a thing, uh, uh, code in your uh, yeah, closed source code which you can't maintain and can't improve. Um, so that's why we decided to bring everything we have. We don't want to make money or anything else. We bring everything else to the community um, with the idea that all of you, all of the other people may help us to improve the, uh, the generator and so on. So everyone can, um, yeah, can contribute if 
he is interested in this uh, in this project and wants to use it. And yeah, that's what we want to do. This brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you for your <laughs> yeah for being so kind and stay till the end. And yeah, do you have questions? Yeah. Is it support uh, relationships because uh, in the in the LP that you created, uh, the fields were text fields. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I have so we have speakers and uh, sessions, can we have a cross reference? Uh, yes, you can. You can define that. Um, you can use uh, uh, usual types, for instance, or you can define own types. And it uh, depends then on the, on the entity which type it has. But later in the page, you can say, OK, um, I want this attribute to be shown as a list or as uh, whatever. In, and if you don't uh, type anything, it uh, uses the, the reference there. So everything is working and is combined to each other. But you don't have to do it. You, you must not do it. You can do it. It's, everything is up to you. Can you only go back to that? Uh, yeah. So you had it created by field? Are they created by fear? Yeah. So uh, that's already linked to uh, some other table or? Uh... Ah, you mean uh, to, yeah, um, you mean to this, it's, it's linked to the component if you use the component, of course, but uh, it's not, we are not, um, uh, we, we did not manage to incorporate the core stuff. But this is also a next step. We created a core model, and using this core model, you can create references to these existing core tables if you want to, um, which have to be there. This is also possible. Yeah. Okay. So you see that <coughs> within the extension that we create, we can create links. Yeah. For yeah, core yeah. Models, uh, yeah. 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 Usually that's the this case. Um, this this component here. Uh, Uh, you want to take pictures, sorry. <laughs> you can have the presentation later. Um, this component um, is also created with the tool. And as you see here, for instance, you can, uh, we have these links here, and they are, uh, they are spe specified in the model. And uh, you can do it with everything, with joint uh, entities yeah, and so on. Happen. Yeah, that's, everything is possible. Um, it's for, it's uh, with the agenda items, you have it here. You have data from all the other entities, from different entities, and then you can say, I want the title to be uh, linked with the edit page. You can do that, yeah. Here, other questions? I want to go to lunch. <laughs> um, this, uh, this web tool is really great, but it's only web. So you need internet to be on the web. Uh, the other tool you have for uh, PHP Storm is offline. You can mm -hmm. do it offline. Are there any plans to make what you have online also available or use a PHP store? Uh, you can use it. Um, the, um, the generating stuff, the, the forward engineering is already there. And you can use the reverse engineering tool. It's uh, also on GitHub, but not the newest version. We should do it later. Um, you can use it as a, it's a jar. You can use it as a standard. CLI. It's no problem. Yes. Can you use CLI? Uh, yeah. You, and you can use both. Or you can use it as a very um, disgusting, uh, disgusting <laughs> GUI, to be honest, so a Java GUI. But you can use uh, the console as well. I mean, it's also working, giving uh, uh, so, input, uh, output uh, paths, and then everything so works. So, give the data model and it outputs the uh, extension. Yes, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. More questions? No? And thank you for listening. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I hope we have some time in the conference to talk a little bit further and we go a little bit deeper. Thank you.